If you are looking for a short tandem axle, easier towing, lighter weight, half ton towable toy hauler, then look no further and stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Hello everybody, welcome to Halet RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and behind us coming in just under 4,800 pounds, which leaves a little over 2,800 pounds of uh, potential cargo space available, which I think is pretty reasonable for something this size. The uh, Grey Wolf 18RR seen today in black label edition with that smexy fiberglass and a host of other upgrades that we're going to touch on as we go. This is available in both the standard and the black label series. And like I said, where this one comes in, there's uh, the 22RR big brother to this, which is awesome. It gives us a private front walk around bedroom. Uh, there's also the 18 RJB Wolf Pup little brother to this. And maybe those numbers don't mean anything to you, but the Wolf Pup is a single axle. And then you go all the way up to that 22 RR and there's kind of like a missing link in between. And that's where this one comes into play. Uh, now Cherokee's had this model in their lineup uh, kind of off and on over the years. And I think they finally really got this thing dialed in because the kitchen space in this is phenomenal for such a small camper. Now the entertainment space inside it admittedly is not great, but it's a toy hauler. You have those massive windows, you have that patio, you have outside TV and grilling hookups. This thing, I think, when you get there, it's for people who spend more of their time outside. It's definitely not for sitting inside watching TV. You're gonna find it is not really well suited to that. Interestingly, if that is what you're looking for, like, I want a shorter, lighter, tandem axle toy hauler, we have that option for you here at Halet RV as well. That would be a Wildwood 190, which is something that I'm going to reference a hundred times probably in this video. And what I'm going to do here to help you kind of sort all this out, because I don't expect you to memorize the alphabet soup of this business the way that I do. Um, I'm going to leave you links in the video description where you can check the Wolf Pup Little Brother. You can check the 22RR Big Brother. And then I'm going to leave you a link to the, uh, the, the cousin, as it were, over in the Forest River Wildwood family. It, what's really interesting is both the Wildwood and this Cherokee are available in the conventional corrugated skin as well as the fiberglass. So we really have some awesome options to look at two trailers, like a number of different ways to really help you find the one that fits you best. Now, this is the first time I've covered one of these. So do me a favor, really leave me a lot of feedback. Let me know what you like about this one, let you, what you'd like to see different. And I'll definitely leave you a link in the video description and check for pricing and availability. And if you like the good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between that we share you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. Let's get going. Now, a real quick look before we uh, crack open that rear toy hauler ramp wall here. It's a single bench model as compared to its big brother, the 22RR. Now, by contrast, uh, the, the, the similar Wildwood 190 that I'm gonna reference a million times in this video, it would actually have a second bench right there. Some people like that, some people don't. And that's why I'm really glad that we have both options here for you. Um, so that, uh, you know, you can really kind of compare and contrast them to see which one works best for you. And they each have some advantages over the other. Cause when you're in a small space like this, you only have so many things that you can work with. We'll see this better from another angle, but here's kind of my like 10 cent overview of the two. If you prefer a better entertainment center, you're going to prefer the Wildwood. If you prefer a better kitchen, then you are going to prefer this Cherokee right here. But something they both do is they both give us a little bit of Dinofa. Because they will both include something like this, a little free-floating folding leg table, which is a lot of Fs and a lot of alliteration for one quick sentence. <laughs> but some of those little Cherokee things that they're doing right here, they're, it's easy to miss. It's not a major thing and it's not flashy or fancy. But they're putting this uh, backer on the bottom of the table. I, I don't know if you call it a backer since it's on the bottom. But what they're doing here is they're giving the screws for the folding legs something far more substantial to bite into. And it's kind of been my experience that when a manufacturer does that, you generally speaking don't have to worry about the table legs uh, falling off or wiggling off because that table being free floating, it tends to get scooted and wiggled. And especially if you're using it outdoors, on, uh, you know, not smooth, flat linoleum. It tends to pull on those legs a little bit more. So sometimes it doesn't have to be flashy. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to work. Plus you can always just kick that backer cushion off of there. And effectively, this is now just a single bunk. And that's one of the things I kind of, I, I look at this floor plan and I say, you know, 
it's it's a neat little couples rig but frankly if you're just a solo person or let's say you're a, a single parent and you you know you have the kid for the weekend or something like that or you just want to go out like you don't want a traditional bunkhouse you want to have room for bikes and kayaks or something like that or you're doing buddy hunting hunting camping or you know a couple single ladies on the fly or something like that it's nice to have that separate space and those big door side windows that we saw you can maintain your privacy with those and of course those windows are over here on the door side of the RV, which affords us some amazing views, which is one of the other reasons I really like these patio units. Cause whether you're sitting inside uh, or, you know, once you get to your destination, you set things up, you bring a couple chairs out here. And I mean, obviously right now you're looking at, you know, our dealership, but the, uh, the sites, the scenery that you can get pretty awesome in here. Um, it is carpetless and ventless flooring, which, Sounds like something that should be default in all toy haulers, but there are some that still don't do that, amazingly. Um, it's got six 2,500-pound uh, D-ring tie-downs, and they start all the way here at the back wall. And I like where they put them, because they put them at kind of like the bathroom break wall right here, and then again, all the way up front toward the bed. Now, uh, if we refer back to the beginning of the video, and I'll probably try to remember to put the, the little diagram on the screen, those are the basic measurements for you. But a couple other things to remember. This is what I call a crossover, not a true toy hauler. And one of the differences there is that it's not like a wolf pack that's wide body and extra tall. This is a standard eight foot body and it's six and a half foot tall inside. And then remember you lose eh, about five inches for the, uh, the whole framework of the ramp patio door and whatnot right there. So uh, you have about a six to six foot one ish entry threshold as it were that is really going to be your delimiting point for a lot of toys this is not really going to be side by side friendly but um motorcycles or e-bikes kayaks dog kennels it doesn't have to be a motorized toy to be a handy toy hauler now i uh, get a lot of questions if i don't mention it what is that black plastic rectangle there and that is an ex exhaust exhaust <laughs> That's maybe the dumbest thing I think I've ever said, but it is factually accurate. So if you're loading this thing, <laughs> such an idiot I am. Um, if you're loading this thing with something that has a combustion engine, you're gonna blow some fumes as it were in here. And that's a two-way air vent where where you're towing it, it can help exhaust some of that, uh, you know, when you're going down the road there. Now we're in a black label edition today. Remember, this is also available in the standard series with the corrugated siding. Um, black label edition gives us the nice solid surface countertops in here. You'll also see a little bit of a nudge up in the uh, bathroom area. One of the other things I wanna point out in this model that's a little bit different from some of the other Cherokee Gray Wolves that are, are like this, it is not a centralized air system. It's one of the very few Gray Wolves that is not because it is a small coach. It's all kind of basically one cabin and they just didn't feel they needed the central air system. Now you get any bigger than this, like a 22RR with a private bedroom and you will get that central air unit. Now, take a look over here at the kitchen. Remember, I keep comparing this to the 190 Wildwood. Well, if we start opening this up, this is where I say, this one I think has a superior kitchen Whereas the Wildwood, I think, has a little bit of a superior uh, living room space. They both have that same 12 foot, uh, uh, 12 volt, pardon me, 10.7 uh, cubic foot DC compressor fridge. But this one adds, uh, in, instead of entertainment space, with a uh, electric space heat and belly burner, as some people called it on that one. And again, check that video out. You'll see what I mean why. Uh, this one has that full pantry, and it kind of shoves the kitchen back a little bit. But I think it works. You got that black skirted stainless steel sink looking great. Did you notice, and I kind of left it here on purpose, the, the backsplash, that magnetic cutting board backsplash right there can be used as a side splash. Or you could obviously use it as a serving tray. Or you could use it to uh, whack attack any rogue uh, gas station murder hobos what maybe had to uh, wander their way onto your campsite over here. <laughs> You gotta watch out for those guys. You people keep thinking, oh, Josh, you're so silly, gas station murder hobos. They're real. They're out there. I'm telling you. <laughs> now, that skylight up top, by the way, it does have a privacy shade that you can pull down. Not so much for privacy from the aircraft flying above, but to uh, help block the sun, which is really nice on that thing. One quick stop on the way, though. This is our converter box right here. One of the cool things Cherokee does 
is uh, their converters are lithium battery capable. Basically, there's a little selector switch inside of it. You can tell it what kind of battery you're using so it can make sure it's sending the, the proper juice to get that battery totally topped off. A lot of people don't realize not every converter is lithium friendly. There are a lot of them that can only get a, a lithium battery up to like 80%. And maybe they have a solar package that can get it back up to 100% after that. Maybe they don't. Um, remember, too, Cherokee has that juice pack. That's what the little red key is over here. That's a battery disconnect where if you want to kill everything in this trailer uh, so that, uh, you know, you're not trickle drawing off the battery. What's cool about that is the juice pack on the roof, the, uh, the, it's a basic 50-watt panel. It is still tending the battery. So the next time you fire that up, you need it to run the power jack or run the awning or something like that. It's going to be charged up, ready, good to go. And that will extend the lifespan of your batteries potentially two or three times longer than just constantly letting them drain and replenish them. That's terrible on batteries. Now from there, we're moving on up to one of the things I like to harp about. A beautiful full window in the entry door that is only privacy shade ready. Um, thankfully, the shade upgrade is very simple, very easy. Frankly, it doesn't even require any significant tools to install. Bonus points, by the way, recommendation from a lot of our viewers who have those things, install them down here so that the shade opens upward. Because what it'll let you do is from the ground level, nobody can really see through. But if somebody knocks on the door, you can still sort of peek up here and say, oh, look, it's a little Suburban rolling by with a drop hitch right now. Probably not even aware they're on screen. That's interesting. There's a second set of TV hookups over there. Because remember, I keep saying this versus the Wildwood. Like, um, the the I guess you'd call that the living room TV position. I mean, frankly, folks, that's it's not great. That's not a great spot for a television. But in this floor plan, there's really not a lot of other spaces. If you're going to use this, I would... Um, either find a swing arm mount that can slot in that place right there, or I would remove that and install a swing arm mount right there so that at least over here from the uh, position of the bench in the living room, you could maybe turn it a little bit and make it some sort of kind of loungy thing. I don't know. But up here in the bedroom, there's a second set of TV plugs in case you wanted to uh, put a TV here in the in the bedroom space, which frankly, for like just lounging around and watching TV, laying in bed with a little pillow under your head would probably work better. Um, they, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at everything that's under here when we uh, open the door from the outside. But over here, this is household and USB plugs. This being eight foot wide at the end of this camp queen it is a short queen bed keep that in mind i know that that's immediately a challenge point for some people taller people like me uh you're definitely going to want to sleep on the outside edge of this although that being said if you did that if you added like an extra pillow or pad here i guess you could make it pretty tall person friendly whereas the more gravity friendly folks such as uh my wife mrs the nerd would uh handle the inside area of that much much better um I don't know, to, to, to each their own, I suppose. Um, what am I missing? Oh, I know. We've got that privacy curtain right here. So take a look at that. Crack that sucker open real quick so you can take a, a full peek around right there. Nothing special, just a curtain, but at least it's there. And here's another thought on this floor plan. This is, I'm not going to call it uh, made handicap accessible. It's not made with enhanced accessibility, I think, specifically in mind. But theoretically, you figure you could roll, potentially, your partner uh, up the rear wall here. Perhaps there's some power chairs that are capable of, of making the ramp incline. I am not very well versed in that. So if, if I say something on this topic that is maybe a little taboo, apologies. That's not my intention to offend anyone. Please let me know. I want to be respectful here. I'm just trying to provide information. But you see, you can then roll all the way up to the bed. And because it's nice and wide, it makes sense to me if someone does have like a chair for assisting, they could park next to that and get their uh, way in bed. Where this one becomes more limited then is the bathroom space right here because it's not extra wide because we do still have a step up into the shower space. At that point, it becomes uh, less uh, friendly to you know those with uh, mobility needs, as it were. And again, if I'm not using the correct terminology, I am very sorry. My intention is to be respectful and informative. Um, moving on from there, you will get the Big XL Vent Fan up here in every one of these bathrooms. And this is six and a half foot tall inside. So that means that my head is in the bubble. You, uh, One of my viewers called me a bubble head the other day. And 
Frankly, I'm not even offended by that. It's fairly accurate. But right here, this Black Label edition goes like insane with luxury fifth wheel shower hardware here and i've had some people actually say man that's that's too much i think that's too much for this camp i mean i'll take it where i can get it if i can get a nice feature in a in a trailer without having to get all the way up into the budget of a you know six figure luxury fifth wheel buddy i'm gonna do it we do have a shower over here which i suppose if your legs are really long you can actually cheat and extend your legs out that way and do some funky shower yoga um, that being said, this bathroom is not any bigger than it absolutely had to be. You can see how my elbows, uh, well, my right hand elbow was up here on that bathroom countertop. My left hand elbow had room. I do have just enough room at my size to be able to uh, utilize the butt napkins as it were to take care of myself after I'm done doing my business. If you're a bigger person, this may be a problematic room for you. Now, my recommendation for something like that Take a visit here, try this thing on, you know, for size, like a pair of pants. Hey, honey. What? Does this camper make my butt look big? Could you stop talking? Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna touch on all the various exterior black label elements as we go. Obviously, that gorgeous fiberglass skin being one of them. But first, there's a little more pedestrian thing I want to touch on. A pair of them actually, a full outside utility shower and black tank flushes right above the single consolidated sewer outlet on this one, which is really nice. Also, the holding tanks on this are in a uh, underbelly enclosure. Now, quick note for clarity, the entirety of the underbelly on this is not fully enclosed. It's not a Magic Four Seasons camper, but where your holding tanks are located, those are uh, enclosed to give you that extra protection. Now, interestingly, no matter whether you're looking at the standard series or the black label, you still have a uh, aluminum nose sweep on the front. That's actually kind of cool because it's an extra thick aluminum, which uh, basically the whole nose of this thing is now kind of like having a stone guard. And if you look at just that roof line, you can see that uh, juice pack solar panel just kind of peeking up over there. Even right now, it's doing its job to make sure those batteries stay topped off and tended so that, like I said, when you are, uh, you know, not camping uh, regularly and you come back to it, she ain't going to be dead on you. Uh, Power tongue jack up front here is something that we get with the black label package, which is very nice when you're hooking up weight distribution systems. Although the standard Cherokee quick jack that you'd find on the, uh, the non-black label variety, let me give you a little demonstration of that. Eight seconds up and down. It is, uh, that, that is one of those things that I think is a, a very underrated asset on the standard series uh, Cherokees. Magnet holdbacks uh, on the uh, Black Label series are another one of those handy little upgrades. And we have added a spare tire to this one. And I know it looks funny just kind of sitting in there, but if, there's not like a rear bumper where you could mount one of those on this one. So there's just only so many places, you know, you could put it. You do have a gas grill quick connect coming off the side in case you want to, uh, you know, fire up a grill or griddle or anything like that. And one of the things I like about that is it's not directly under the awning, uh, so you're not smoking yourself out. It's actually kind of funny how many manufacturers will put an outside grill hookup station directly under an awning and then put a sticker next to it that says, by the way, don't use the awning when you're cooking. What kind of sense does that make? It's, that, I don't know. That doesn't strike me as very smart. Now, it's not a massive awning. What is it? It's like, I don't know. 12, 14, 12 foot, something like that. I, I'd have to tape measure it. I, I looked at too many specs already today, obviously, and I'm failing. But the uh, the point here is that it's it's got all the windows, the door covered, your outside TV station, all that little stuff is kind of all covered up. And in the back here, after I've had me one too many, which is one more than one, because when it comes to drinking, Uncle Josh is an ultralight. Um, we got the drunken Uncle Leash Latch which evidently you can also use to keep your pets at your campsite. <laughs> Who knew? Um, the, uh, on the back here, the ramp patio is a standard feature on these. And, and some people, in case you're wondering, like, how do I, well, how do I load my motorcycle? What do I do with all of that? Um, when you're loading stuff, basically you're going to, uh, you know, that, that center gate where I have like one folded out right now on the right hand side then one folded in. You're just gonna leave them both folded in and then you can just ride your bike right up the ramp and then you reattach the uh, cables if and when you wanna convert it over uh, into patio mode here. Now, um, up top, 
you can see where we have that LCI Insight backup camera and the extra flood load lighting with the black label package. Um, one of the other things I wanted to show you though is if we close that down, just to give you a look at the rear door back here, but specifically the latches. One of the things I really like is they use a cam bar latch system on this, which is a positive latching system, which if you don't know what that means, basically it self catches itself without needing a key lock, but it also still has a key lock, which I think is very cool. Oh, major feature I forgot to talk about inside. I'm so sorry. You wanna talk about a cool feature? <laughs> Pun intended. Let's talk about a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner standard on these. So I know it's not centralized, but given its small size, it's gonna, you'd be breathing icicles in this if you want to. Black Label also swaps out from the non-tinted framed windows, which are good for airflow, to frameless windows, which tilt open for rainy day airflow, albeit they don't tilt open terribly far. So kind of keep that in mind. There's, again, willing to always tell you the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between. Um, the uh, RV has limited outside storage, and I love that Cherokee wants to make sure that you're not mixing your black tank stuff with your freshwater stuff, you know? So they give us a handy sewer hose caddy here. And you see there's also multiple mounting points uh, for the suspension shackles on this. So you could actually raise the body up uh, on this a little bit higher if you wanted to. Now, one other thing here Cherokee does on a lot of their RVs, they don't do uh, a full TPMS, but on their valve stem caps, they have little tire pressure indicators. The idea is that this is supposed to flip from green to red when it is under pressured. I've heard from a lot of customers, these are not always the most reliable thing. Some people will at least flick them a couple times to make sure that the little spinnerator, <coughs> technical term, didn't get stuck in there. I've also heard some people just flat out don't trust them and we'll still get the old, uh, you know, little tire pressure checker job out, which frankly, I don't think is ever a bad idea. If you're not gonna go with a full TPMS, make sure you're checking your tire pressures every time before you leave. That's another thing people don't realize. When you're checking tire pressure, uh, you actually wanna make sure you're checking cold tire pressure, if at all possible. So thanks for hanging out with us once again here at our family owned and operated facility. Remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. And again, please leave me, uh, you know, any questions, comments, the good, the bad, the things that you like, you don't like all that stuff. Uh, if, if there is something you don't like, maybe just be nice and leave me uh, a note on something you like too. Sometimes a little positivity does help keep the, uh, the wind in the sails and getting these videos rolling as it were. So uh, take care, stay safe, have fun, and until next time, everyone.